Hey guys, how's it going? How's everybody doing out there? I, I'm good. Thanks for asking. We I, we were just talking. I don't, I'm not sure exactly where you're going with this. Well, I didn't officially ask you how you're doing. I think we just launched in with, with hi or something. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And you need to put a shirt on. Well, I guess you can't tell <laughs> that from my arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yeah, this going to be fun. This going to be a fun day. How, how's everybody doing out there? We got some some highs from whoops. It's just hold on. I just bled on myself. <laughs> Wait, what kind of what kind of show is this? What? Been watching watching too much Mortal Kombat or uh, <laughs> Invincible. Cut my finger or something? What the? Hmm. <laughs> Normal. I'm in the shop when I spontaneously find blood on my fingers. That's not usually a desk thing. I, I do like that the, it appears to be, and maybe the rest of the world, since you are in Longmont, maybe it's just a Longmont thing, but the standard reaction whenever you cut your finger is to lick the wound clean. <laughs> you can see that. I went off camera for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody knows you are disgusting. Oh, great. Or they know that we're both disgusting. I don't know. All right, well, then I'm going to flip over here and publicly apologize for my disgustingness. I apologize. I don't know. I honestly don't know what happened. Is that like a little drop of blood on your keyboard or like right next to your mouse now? That I see I on, on your touchpad? Look at your touchpad. What's that little dot on the edge of it? I got that. I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm looking for, for an exit wound and I can't really find anything. So I don't know. I'm assuming it's just going to, like, my nose is just going like, <laughs> to sprout all over and I'm going to, oh man. Wait, it, so this, wait this... to start the show dramatically. Yeah, this is this is this can only go down, go downhill, I guess. Um, hey, welcome to SketchUp Live. <laughs> I am your host, uh, hemophiliac Aaron Dietzen. Uh With me today is my good buddy Jody. I keep my blood on the inside. That's right. Well, maybe we don't get to see you, so who knows? Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna hang out to you guys and answer some questions. Any questions you have about SketchUp, we will do our best to answer it live right here. So uh, that's gonna be a fun one. I, I always enjoy these because I I like the interactivity. I like that. Wait. That, uh, oh. So Barry just said it sounds like your mic is not plugged in properly. Uh. So now let's see if what that means is. Oh, it's seat. not, and I know why. Okay, hold on. I'm going to take us back here. Okay, S say something pleasant and enjoyful to everybody, Jody, because i got to mute for a second. Uh, okay, so I'm presuming then that everybody can hear me, but they, I think they could hear you, Aaron. It's just that you sounded wrong. You sounded like you are in a toilet stall, as Studio Art Ghoul pointed out, which... Actually, that was a little surprise that probably is worth sharing with the audience is uh, where Aaron's working from today. I'm just kidding. Now I'm, now I'm curious. Uh, so you guys, you guys, could you hear Aaron at all? Or did he just okay. sound weird? Okay. Let's, let's try Does this again. Hear me? I apologize. We, we, uh, so some of you know, because you were joining us, we were, we were, recording a season of our podcast SketchUp Talk and uh, I only have a single mic input on this camera that we record through so I actually had switched over my input to this mic so this mic was picking me up from over there and that's why it sounded yeah that is a technical term bathroom stally so Good catch, thank you. Wow, so uh, blood on the keyboard, wrong microphone. I'm an optimist, so I like to think there's nowhere to go but up. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, I think in answer to your shirt, should we clarify that today is Siete de Mayo? That's right. The uh, I got nothing. I wasn't, pro I wasn't prepared for that. I'm sure there's a funny joke that has Sorry. to do with that. Seventh. 
Personally, I'm a big fan of Arrested Development, so I celebrate Quattro de Mayo. Quattro de Cinco, that's what it is. <laughs> the made-up holiday. Um, it sounds like something that Gob would have said. That, that was his mom. His mom made up Quattro de Cinco mm -hmm. as a way to uh, rest... steal Cinco de Mayo from people who celebrated it. May she rest in peace. Uh, that's true, yeah. Okay. Now then, let's 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 aid some cues. <laughs> I'm going with it. All right. Um, so we're gonna just we're gonna hop in here. Uh, a couple ways you can ask questions. You can ask questions in the chat. So wherever you're joining from, YouTube, Facebook, uh, the uh, the one of you. There's one person on Twitch right now. Is that you, Jody? Are you watching on Twitch? <laughs> nope. Okay. Uh, if you guys have questions, just go ahead and type it in the chat and it'll pop up. Um, if you put at SketchUp at the beginning, uh, then it will be easier for Jody to find if we do end up with a lot of questions coming in. Uh, we had a couple of questions in the forum already, so I will go hit those. I had one that I wanted to just start with real quick because it did come up. It just came up in the forum and I wanted to, to share this because it's a common question that comes in about putting textures and then the, that texture stretching versus uh, you know moving with, with the geometry. So uh, I wanted to take a look at that. So I'm going to come in here real quick. And just to illustrate this, I'm going to draw a couple of rectangles. Actually, I'll just take this rectangle and make a copy of it over here. And I will go ahead and throw a brick pattern on here. I like throwing, I like using brick patterns for texture examples because it's really easy to see if that grid of bricks is off when you when you make changes. All right, so this one right here, I'm going to grab this. Actually, I'm going to make a third. No, I'm going to make a group of that, and then I'm going to copy that group also. So here I have raw geometry. Over here I have two groups. Groups and components for what I'm showing behave the same. So if I come to this rectangle and I start manipulating it, so if I grab this end and I move it, or I shift it around, or I triple click and then scale. Uh, no matter what I do, it's gonna take that texture and just basically reapply it to the new face that I'm creating. Um, if I break the face like an auto fold or something, then I'll see a change to the way the texture applies, but the texture's gonna stay at the same geometry. All right, now if I take this group right here and I hit scale and I start stretching it, look what happens here. This does stretch out that, that uh, geom or the, the texture. So when you start stretching a container, a group or a component like that, it does actually take what's there and stretch it out. So you'll see deformation to the material like that. If there's ever a situation where I want to change some geometry that's inside without deforming the geometry, that's where I have to just double click to go in here and then I can do that same scale. But, oh, I lied. Look at that. Looks identical. That is very interesting. That, wait a minute, hold up, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, that's weird. Oh, no, you know why? Ah, um, sorry, I was doing a test and I played around with projected textures. So that, that shouldn't be, so this is what should have happened there. I totally ruined my example by, by playing with stuff. Sorry. What I was saying, what I was saying was the true thing. What I just showed was actually incorrect. I apologize. I just filled with what I had. Um, so yes, if you if you deform the outside of a component, it's the same as the, as having a component, and you can have two instances of the same component, but they can look different because you deform the container. Same thing goes for the texture. That texture is going to stay the same on the geometry on the inside, whereas the deformation, the scaling of the component on the outside, will actually cause it. The material to get stretched. Oh man, overall, not not uh, not not doing the uh, not the top one so far. <laughs> Maybe it'll get better. Oh yeah, That's, I can't, I said there's nowhere to go but up, but apparently I can flub the first answer to the question. So, so here let me let me lob a, a, a softball at you. I appreciate Vibu it. said, "How do you animate in SketchUp, like opening and closing doors?" Okay, so uh, there's a couple options. So something like opening and closing a door, if you're just going to do it right inside SketchUp, 
you want to use something like a dynamic component with the interact tool. So anytime you create a dynamic component, you can set an on click value where if you click on it, it will change something. So in something like a door, you can actually set an orientation zero or negative 90 degrees and say on click animate from state one to state two. So if you're like just viewing through, that's what that interact tool is for. Um, I try not to generally jump into dynamic components without preparing a lot because I'm not great at them. So I don't want to show that because that could go down. That could get worse. <laughs> if you want to <laughs> actually show something like create an animation of a door opening to closing, you'd almost have to do something like use an extension like animator or do some scene animation where you have different instances of the door, like here, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, and run through those different uh, views to animate that. SketchUp in SketchUp, uh, an item has one instance in one location at a time. So when you run animations like export animation, it's gonna go through your scenes and, and export that. But a thing, whatever it is, a group, line, face, can only exist in one place across all that information. So when you've seen sometimes, up on the forum we've seen things like uh, Dave has posted some stuff of different animations to show how things work. Those get animated with copies of the same geometry showing up on different scenes in different locations. But like I said, there is that Fredo has an animator extension that actually allows you, very similar to Flash, to set locations and it kind of goes in back and actually moves geometry around to animate. So. There's options. There's options on how to do that. SketchUp itself was never actually made to be an animator. SketchUp's always been uh, the tools, the intent of it has always been to make geometry. So um, there's options there, but uh, yeah, you have to play with a little bit. That's a tricky one because it's there's a lot of ways to accomplish different things there. It can there be is. ambiguous, eh? Uh, so Nathan asked if there is a way to tell which style is active on your view. He wants to update the style so that all saved views update at once. Animation scenes, etc. Yeah, so whatever you go to, when you come into styles, you will have one that has a little, it's kind of hard to see. Um, nope, none of those are that. Ooh, that's an excellent question. <laughs> I'm trying to remember now how you, how you, I always thought, yeah, so this, so I can see now that it has that on there, but when I first came in, it didn't. So let's play. Let's, uh, I'm going to make something here just so we have a thing to look at. And I'm going to make a scene. I'm going to make a scene. All right, now I'm going to come around to this yeah. side, have a different style, and make a new scene. All right, now if I jump to this one, it does not reflect the updated scene on the screen. That is, that's a very good question. Sweet. Way to stump the oh. judges. Oh, so it is, no, it does, it, it shows, it's not highlighting it, it's telling you the, the title of it, right? It's showing it right here, sorry. It doesn't highlight it from the list, it actually shows it up at the top. So this is the current style, is hidden line. With the big tiles like this, it doesn't actually tell you the name, but you can change that, because you can come in here and I can say, I want to see a list view, and then I can actually see Okay, what is 3D printing style? That's down here. Whereas this hidden line style is right here. And I think, that, does the small one actually show names and icons? No, it just shows smaller icons. Yeah, tiny. So yeah, tiny so it shows the, the icon here, the title here, and the description here of the current type, so. There's so many okay. pieces of SketchUp. Sometimes I gotta, I gotta refresh myself yeah, yeah. on where they all are. <laughs> I feel like it's not uncommon that I'm I'm relearning how to do a thing that I did that I did before. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not seeing new stuff coming in because I'm still kind of hanging out with these old ones. So Araya uh, asked, when layout will become fast and res a fast and responsive program, and I'm I'm not quite sure what, what that means. So yeah, I I, I will tell you this. Um... Jody and I will always do our best to answer questions to the best of our abilities, the best of our knowledge, and in the realm that we are legally allowed 
to talk about things. So <laughs> anything that's future facing, uh, we tend to stay away from because when, when you start working at a big company, you get have to sign this, especially a public traded one, you sign this big stack of paper that says you won't let information out about what's going to get made, when, that sort of thing. And uh, there's some interpretation about what that is. Um, but I can legitimately say, I don't know the roadmap for layout. I know that every release, they incrementally, incrementally get a little bit better. Um, so I'd imagine that every release that comes out, it's going to get snappier. Um, and I know that uh, performance for layout is something that we want to be better. I mean, especially when you get bigger models, we want it to be snappier. We want it to be better. I can't say for you what that threshold is, but I'll just say I know there is interest in making it the best possible program it can be. And it should be should be clear that just because you're giving this non-answer doesn't mean that there is a, an answer. Yeah. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> don't, don't try and read between the lines there. <laughs> and I'll there, say there might not be lines. I'll say this too. Um, both jo neither Jody or I work in development. We don't work in product management. Um, we get involved with new releases about the same time that people who are in the beta testing group do. Um, sometimes even later. Like me, I show a lot of software on my screen daily. So I try to stay away from pre-release software altogether because I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake and show something I shouldn't. So, um, and Jody too. Jody spends most of his time in what's actually happening right now, answering questions about what's happening now. Um, so yeah, we, we're not feigning uh, a lack of connection to this. <laughs> this is genuine. This is actually where we live. So, um, yeah. So I know, like I said, I know we're always working on it. Stuff's always getting better. Uh, this is, I, I expect to see improvement as releases keep coming up. That's what That's I got. Good. We do have a couple of questions um, on the forum too. If we want to jump over there at any point to. Well, so yeah, but so I'll, Andy I'll has a good you. one, mm -hmm. but it looks really long. Here's here's what I'm thinking is we'll kind of make it through this the list of questions we got here just because they just kind of there's when we start we get started there's a, a whole flurry of them and I don't yeah. want to miss any of these and then we can come okay. back to the ones. Cool. Here. Um. Okay. So camping wants to know about when you're going to do a video about SketchUp for web, and at the same time, uh, Jado also was asking which browser we recommend. So it's a couple web questions. All right. Um, yeah, so I ha have absolutely, I like SketchUp for web. I think it's fun way to experience SketchUp. I, I think that the UI is way more into, or I want to say intuitive, uh, for somebody who's coming in brand new to SketchUp, um, I think it's a pretty cool way to optimize the screen because we, we can't do we can't take advantage of things like windows and mac and just throw you know say hey toolbar put these things up here so i think that as far as a web interface goes i really like the way that they decided to do the nesting buttons and stuff i know people were used to SketchUp or i can't find anything but i think uh it is pretty cool i'm all for it i haven't gotten into it because i just feel like um I have so many things I still haven't shown in our main products, so that's why there's not more web products. But uh, well, I'm luck, up for it. Luckily, there's a lot of overlap between the two. Absolutely. The UI is slightly different, but otherwise, if you can do it, other than finding the button that you need to click, if you can do it in Pro, you can do it in Shop Yeah. or Free. So that is, that is <clears> an important <throat> point, is uh, the actual content, for the most part, maybe there's a few pieces that aren't in Free, I think, but most of yeah. what we show is doable with the tools we use. Um, a lot of the content we do, we stay away from real extension heavy, unless there's certain workflows where we're like, let's talk about organic modeling or um, you know, certain things we get into where we dive deeper into extensions. But a lot of what we do is I try to use start by using uh, just native tools as much as possible. And that's, yeah, like Jody said, it may look a little different, but it functions exactly the same. So. Um, yeah, so it's not, not saying we won't do more in the future, uh, just not yet. Not yet. Um, so Bill was asking, he said he often gets faces reversed in models. And when he orients, when he orients the faces from other faces, other faces switch that remain white. 
sorry, it was worded a little weird. Basically, I gotcha. sometimes you'll do orient faces and the things orient differently than he's expecting. Right. So two things. One is monochrome view. So as you come in here and start modeling, um, I'm just going to throw some geometry up here. I'm going to reverse some faces. I'm going to pull some stuff out. The thing that ends up happening, right, is when we come in here and we start putting geometry together like this, inside and outside faces become hard to keep track of. Inside and outside faces are very important if you're going to do anything like rendering or export for like 3D printing or anything where you need to have a solid. So I highly recommend keeping an eye on view, face style, monochrome. Because regardless of what materials you have put on there, it's going to show you where things are facing. Now, what you're, I get what you're saying where you're saying, well, if I go in here and I say orient face, it doesn't always work right. Orient face really depends on a continuous shell of faces. So when I say orient face, it says look at all the connected faces and based on the way this one is facing, orient the other faces so that this thing makes a shell. Well, as soon as I start having interior geometry or disconnected pieces, orient face is not as dependable. So if you do want to try to use orient face as opposed to manually checking your faces and orient them the right way, you want to use something like a solid inspector to make sure that what you're working on is one solid shell. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to get stuff where I hit it and it reverses some and then the others. I'd say like nine out of ten times I hit orient face and it does that switch. Uh, you know, it goes from gray to white, white to gray. If I look on the inside of the model, it's because I have some interior geometry connecting stuff. And when you have that interior geometry, rather than being like a cohesive shell on the outside, what SketchUp sees is like these, these fully created masses just kind of touching together. And then it's really hard for it to figure out what's supposed to be inside, what's supposed to be outside. So that's what you're running into. Um, my, the, this sounds, okay, this is going to sound a little bit snotty, and I apologize. I'm letting you know up front. The easiest way to keep your faces facing the right way is don't let them go backwards in the first place. So that means when you're doing your raw geometry, model with a front face and a back face and watch. Don't, don't start throwing colors onto faces before you know they're facing the right spot. And it might mean putting a toggle on the monochrome to check things, um, but it really is important. Some people, but depending on their style or the lighting style they have, they find that this light gray is too light. So um, I might, maybe I'll have a, Let's switch to a different. I can't do anything with this text. Give me a give me a style I can see. Um, so depending on your style, you might find that that light gray is too hard to to differentiate in the size of the model. So some people do like bright pink as their back face or bright green. So you might think about something like that in your default style too, changing that 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 color. But yeah, go to go to view uh, face style and change to monochrome and check that model out before you start putting materials on there. All right, sorry, that was a little rambly at the end, but important point. That's, that's fine. So this is a little bit of a question and a little bit of a request. Ashley was asking uh, if you're able to adjust textures on objects in the free version, and also could you, when you're answering these, could you possibly note if something is a pro or free, or if it's something is applicable to free when you're answering it sure. in pro? Um, I don't use free a lot, so sometimes I'm a little foggy on what's in there, what's not. I know in the free version, you can edit textures. You can't create textures. You can't load materials in. You have to use just the default textures. But as far as I know, Jody, maybe you can verify, um, editing textures works the same. Is that true? Is that a true statement? Maybe? I think the tricky part is it's going to look different probably than a standard Mac or Windows UI. Yeah, I know the, the yeah, so when I come into like the paint bucket tool, this is very different in the web uh, UI than either Mac or Windows. Um, but as far as I know, you can edit and apply the stock textures. The big thing that free is missing is the ability to create textures. I believe shop has it, but free does not, so. Yeah, and I think, I'll have to I'll have to try and get get to a login that doesn't have shop because <laughs> by default I'm I'm logged in as me and so yeah I've got the the whole studio bundle. Got to go go log in uh, as your son or something and and start a free account for him. He'll appreciate it anyhow. Yeah, yeah. well he should he probably actually has pro too. I mean he's really hardcore. Um, 
so Caesar asked a little while ago what that thing was in your left hand. I mean, you can't have an FA, FAQ session without. That's right. <laughs> this is Talking a standard question. Uh, this is a 3D mouse. This is specifically the Space Mouse Enterprise from the company 3D Connection. What a Space Mouse or a 3D mouse lets you do is with this little puck right here, it lets you move the puck and that moves uh, the screen around so I don't have to use this mouse over here to do that. So SketchUp already has very intuitive moving. So with the, with the three button mouse, the middle button, I can you know switch to orbit. While I'm orbiting, I can zoom in and out. Um, I can use it like with shift and then pan. Super nice, super easy way to move. If you get to a point as a designer or a presenter where you wanna to go to the next level, that's where a 3D mouse comes into play. Because as a designer, what it does is as I'm moving, I can do things like I can select as I'm rotating because it takes that rotation out of the mouse hand and puts it over here. The other thing is it gives me a lot of control so I can make these nice fine sweeping movements. And the reason I like this is if you are not used to SketchUp. So when we're used to SketchUp, right, um, how many times have you done this yourself? You're like, I gotta get to that backside, so I'm gonna do this, zoom in, zoom out. What's going on with Sumele? You know, this, this jerky jumping back and forth is not a big deal and it's actually like i said it's, it's very fast way to move through sketchup but unless your brain is connected to the hand that's doing the movements it can be a little disorienting right to jump around like that so what the 3d mouse lets you do is if you're presenting it gives you the ability to give you nice smooth movements and i don't have to worry about anybody getting confused or jumping in too quick or anything like that so uh, yeah, that's what a 3D mouse does. Not a requirement to run SketchUp by any means. Most people run without a 3D mouse, but if you do a lot of presentations or you're a designer and looking to, what's the thing you do to step to the next level, uh, a 3D mouse is something to consider. All right. Uh, 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 how long have you been? How long have you been using SketchUp? Marcus Marcus wants to know. I think. 15 minutes here. 20 minutes, right? Half an hour. Give or take. Yeah. Um, I think I started using it. Well, Jody, when did when did version six come out? Fifteen years, something yeah. like that. Uh, version six was that. Is that the one that coincided with Google? It was just like before. We released, it was the release before we re Google, I think. Yeah, we did. We did six, and then we got acquired by Google, and then we came out with free, which was based on six. So that would have been two thousand and six. Okay. Yeah. So that's about right. So. Years. Yeah. So yeah, 16, 14, 15 years. I think I've been, I was using eight to 10 years before I started at SketchUp and I started about uh, coming up on six years. So, so yeah, somewhere, somewhere between, hold on, what's eight plus six, 12, four, so 14 to 16 years, <laughs> somewhere in that window. I started using just kind of recreationally kind of fun, you know, um, I was looking at 3D modeling softwares, trying to figure out which one was gonna be best. I think I trialed everything I could find and SketchUp was the one that I just really liked. It just clicked with me the way my brain worked. So I stuck with it and then ended up liking it so much I pursued a job there. And now the rest is, is history. That's right. Uh, actually, the next, the next question after a whole bunch of people asking about the 3D mouse was Marcus again. Uh, well, Lawrence asked if you could model the sun which feels a little bit, he said it's 696 million meters, the radius is. I'll so do a scale version. Maybe... Yeah. <laughs> How about this? Yeah. Oh, we got to mm. go back to, and we'll give it a nice, bright, boom. Boom, there you go. Sun. I think his was a theoretical question. And look at you, just getting all practical. That's what I do. Uh, <laughs> so the, the Marcus was asking, uh, what is tangent to the edge? So I guess you could. So with on... what tangent is saying is if I come in to draw an arc. So if I, if I connect to one point and I pull this off, see how it's, it's uh, light blue right now? Let, here, let me actually, let me reverse the face. You can see this better and deselect it. Right, so if I come in here, start drawing an arc, it's that light blue color. Tangent 
is, and this is, I'm sure there's a better, a better way to explain this, but this would be my way of explaining it, is tangent means that that arc is going to leave the line it's connected to at a nice, smooth arc. Right, so it's not going to be like a big jump where it's going to go up the line and then jump into the arc and turn sideways. It gives you this nice, smooth, straight line into the arc. Um, if I come up on this line right here and come back, it'll eventually turn magenta, which is tangent to both ends. So if I click, or both edges, so if I click that, this is a nice tangent arc. So I know in mathematics we talk about tangent between other geometries, the snap that happens inside of SketchUp is related to arcs, and that's what it is. It's that nice, smooth transition from arc to line. Um, okay, so I'm scrolling past a whole bunch of how to, like how to render or what's the best render, stuff like that. Those are, those are tricky and those are not necessarily good questions here. Definitely go check out the forum if you've got specific how to use plugins or third party stuff. Yeah. Um, we 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 they, found out that rendering live is just it's not it's not exciting. it's not a pretty picture. No, it's um, Dave did confirm that you cannot edit textures in SketchUp Free. Thanks, Dave. Uh, it's, today might be a textures day because <laughs> it looks like Steve had a question. He said he has an issue showing textures in a clear way on his construction plans. For example, if he has a texture cast in place foundation with concrete texture provided in SketchUp. If I texture a cast in place, foundation with, I'm not quite quite sure if I understand what that says. Maybe you do? Oh, so, says, oh, 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 there's another line. When he shows it in, in layout, the textures are fuzzy, which is. Uh, um, yeah, so I'll just be totally straightforward with you guys, because that's what I like to do. The, the textures that are shipped with SketchUp are not high quality textures. They're kind of supposed to be starter textures. They're enough to get you going. So I can throw this on here and it looks like concrete. This one looks like brick. This one looks like wood. But they're very low quality. They're not, they're not, uh, I wouldn't use them for final output. Um, speaking of Dave, Dave is an example of a person who takes advantage of the ability in SketchUp Pro to import images and use them as textures. With that, you can use much higher quality images and those images should end up going over into layout looking a lot better. The other thing to keep in mind is in layout, you can actually set the quality of, the, of, of everything. So you can actually set screen, qual screen resolution and output resolution to low, medium, or high. The higher you set it, um, it's more demanding on the computer, of course, so it'll, it'll, it can slow down layout. So generally speaking, um, what I will do is have my screen resolution set very low and then my output resolution set as high as possible. But it's po that's something else that could be too. Go look at, uh, I believe it's in preferences under layout, and you can actually see the resolution that you're looking at it. But yeah, and then get a higher quality resolution or higher resolution image if uh, it's still not looking good in layout. So staying, staying on the, uh, the textures, I think I mean, basically there's that's conversations cool. and sub questions that popped up with materials. That makes sense. Uh, Studio RT Cool asked, if you create a file in desktop and then open it in free, all the textures that were in the file you created will be accessible in free. Correct. That's true. But there is no way to save those uh, to use outside of that model. I think that's true. And Dave pointed out that you can still do the rotate of textures. It's just you can't like go into the material editor to tweak stuff. Right. And you can't. Like that, with you import the model, you won't be able to like save those textures for use in other models. It'll just be in that one model. They'll they'll just be there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then Burned asked if there's if if it's possible for materials like using materials. Is there for the materials the possibility to list material names to see? Um. Can you? Yeah, well, okay, so here's a couple things. So if I go in here to my materials and I go to I go to home, it's going to show me here's my materials right here, right? Um, if you hover over them, you can actually see the names of the materials. There's also a handful of extensions out there, and I apologize because I don't remember every single one of these. Um, I know there used to be one called 
uh, Goldilocks. Um, there's another one, I think it was called Material Editor, where you can actually pull a report showing uh, uh, swatch, the name, and I think even the size or the resolution of the materials you're using. So there are extensions to do that. The, what, what you can get in the default is pretty basic. I believe Windows is similar. It looks a little different, but I think it's similar. I think in Windows you might even be able to get a, a list view. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so you can. Um, the extensions do make it a little easier. I'd have to look in, actually Dave might remember off the top of his head. Uh, I think. It's entirely possible Dave answered this too. So oh, we'll that could be. Yeah, I think it's material editor, but yeah. Um, so Nathan was wondering, he said he struggles with planes and lines that become non-planar and he usually has to delete and start over. Is there a way, is there an extension or way to highlight what is not coplanar so that it can be fixed easier? Not an extension, but a native functionality. If you go into edit uh, for your style and in there go to the, the edges, uh, uh, tab and down here where it says all the same if you change this to by axis and this is not going to fix every problem for you but it's going to fix a lot of them um, it will actually highlight each edge to the axis it is currently parallel to so if I was to do something like grab this line right here and pull it out here these ones are no longer parallel to the green axis they turn to black again this will help a lot the other thing that's going to help a lot is being careful when you input. And again, this goes back to like, well, you won't have backsides facing out if you don't draw backsides facing out, and I know that. But as you go in and draw, rather than draw something like, you know, just click to wherever, being careful to draw on axis. So here I'm drawing, so if I just come over here and snap over here, that's off axis. If I'm careful and I move along till it snaps to red, that's on axis. The other thing is, use your keyboard for input. So if I come along here and I type in, I want this to be six foot, so I'm kind of like doing this and going, ah, that's close enough. That's gonna eventually lead to issues. So when you're coming in here to draw this line in, type in six foot, and that's six foot on the red axis, that is gonna stay there. So yeah, it is, there's a, there's a lot of importance to, to, I'm not a fan of this term, but garbage in, garbage out. People have said that. I'm not saying anybody's modeling here is garbage, but uh, SketchUp is going to honor whatever you put in there. So if you aren't careful about where you click and you click off axis, it's going to say, okay, I'll draw that line off axis. It's not going to ever go in there and go, oh, well, you were half a millimeter off the red axis, so I'm going to pop you back over here. It, it actually will do that if you get really, really, really small. It'll end up rounding a little bit, but for the most part, it's going to let you put in whatever you want. So, uh, by axis will help you identify if you're off axis, um, but I don't know of any anything that says. Actually, that's not true either. There is an extension. Lawrence said there are plugins that can make things collinear and coplanar. Yeah, but I'm... so if you have something like, you know, if I have this point and I'm just going to pull it upward. Oops. If I move this just eh, slightly off axis, I can use something like vertex tools uh, to put it back to coplanar. But um, yeah, so there, there is, there is tools that can do a little bit of that but it, it can kind of be a construct or a destructive solution because it's basically like just smashing stuff flat. Um, it can be a little rough. So yeah, there's really nothing to, to, to beat careful input to begin with, I guess is this the, my, my, my takeaway message there. The better, the better the, the starting material, the better the end results. That was beautiful. Thank you, Confucius. Have you ever considered the fact that Confucius is basically, it almost seems like the root of the word confusing? Yeah, you got, you got to think and figure some stuff out on your own with, with a lot of those things, I think. Yes, yes. Uh, so Oriet on Facebook, uh, 
uh, said, depending on the angle, white color faces will look gray. Is there a trick to overcoming that? So yeah, that's what I was talking about before. Um, if I come in here to a material, one of the things I have done before is I've changed my default color from that gray background to a brighter color. And that, that tends to help. In fact, my default used to be like a bright purple background. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's an option. Um, if I come in here like that. So there's my, there's my material now. And as I Uh, if I look at that, then if I model with that material, oh, those are all textured. I want to see those. Um, well, I'm trying to remember how to set a default material type. One moment. This will come to me. I've actually done a skill builder on this exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> quick, just hold that up. I'm going to go watch a video real quick. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's what, all you have to do, so you can actually set it. You do have to save it as a style though. So once you change your default material with that back color, like I said, depending on the style and your coloring and your shadows and your lighting, uh, it can look the same, that, that light blue. So you can set a, a brighter color and if you just save that into your style, uh, you'll be modeling with that default color. I'll do a ref little refresher on that. I'm trying to remember now. Um, it's nice that you're getting this opportunity to rebuild some of the skills which maybe have uh, languished in your... Fizzling, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's actually one of the things if you look at, if I look at the styles, right? See the styles right here? It's actually showing you in the thumbnail, it's showing you default front style and back style. So you can actually change that so that, oh, maybe it's right in there. Duh, hold up. If I say edit, yeah. Shh. Hold on, my brain just caught up with my mouth or vice versa. So if I just set that, there we go. Now my front style is white, my front face is white, my back face is purple. So if I come in here now, and I start modeling. There's my purple. So if I reverse this face, now I'm seeing the outside. So yeah, just that simple. Just click the buttons, man. Come on. I'm you, looking for. You make it look so easy. Uh, okay. So genuine patriot said that they, whenever they're making, so no matter what they do, the seat and sofa backs don't look natural. They look like hard blocks. He's wondering, I mean, he's asking for you. They're asking for you to make a video. They maybe you just have thoughts about making natural looking seat cushion folds. Yeah, that's a little, little how to -y. It It is. And that's um, what I would recommend is uh, so very rarely do pieces look like this. So there's a couple things you can do, of course. Um, one is rounding off corners. So we've done several videos on that using native tools or something like uh, Fredo Corner. So I'm, I'm gonna use that this time because it's gonna be quicker for me. Where you can actually go in here, uh, Fredo Corner, round it off. Let's go a little bigger. So that's the first piece. Uh, the other piece is to take something like this right here and use sandbox tools or, or a deformation tool like sandbox tools to go in and actually get yourself some some bumps or some some change in geometry. So I'm going to grab this, make it a group. I'm going to go in that group just to isolate it. And I'm going to go to view. Hold on. Find sandbox tools. There we go. Uh, let's do like five inches. What? I'm making... While you're modeling, have you, have you ever heard of a, an extension that does any kind of mathing stuff? Like calculates sine, exponential, different like different equations. 
I know you just said words, but I don't recognize them as part of my... <laughs> They're math words. That's not a thing. <laughs> Seems to me like you should only speak in numbers when you're mathing or talking about math even, right? So with something like this then, sorry, I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can come in here. What did I, what did I hit? because I have a huge 30 foot radius. There we go. So now I can come in and I can create things like indents. Um, I can mess with my geometry a little bit and then grab that and soften it right up again. I deformed something. I did something wrong. Wow. Just bat in a thousand. There we go. That sounds like a sports ball uh, metaphor there, eh? Means doing great. Um, so yeah, so I can use something like like that to go in and make those kind of unnatural things, unnatural. Uh, uh, whoa, Sumele. Um, kind of, you know, make those wrinkles and those kinds of shapes in there. You can also use something, if you want to go, if you're doing a lot of that kind of geometry, model like a lot of cushions, then you're going to look in something like uh, Artisan or the Sub-D tool set, um, or even Enerot has an extension called Terrain Eroder, which is really cool because it takes very, you know, ordered formal shapes and breaks them down kind of randomly. Uh, it sounds weird, but you can actually use that with Soft and Smooth to get kind of organically flowing shapes so yes there is ways to do that um yeah i guess it's not a off the cuff thing to to show but you're right i'll uh, i'll look into a video on something like that how we could talk about making uh cushions or something like that with native tools i'm gonna write down notes how responsive uh andy asked if you could show show us how to add a new texture to the default material set of course, with the caveat that this is going to be unique to the way it works on Mac and Pro. Yeah. It's be different on Windows. Let me different in web. let me do a video on that because um, yeah, because it, there is the interfaces are all three different. So um, that's a great idea. I will I will add so adding SKMs. I just don't want to, because I don't remember off the top of my head how to do it on Windows, and I don't think I've ever done it on web yet. Or no, I have. It's been a while. So yeah, let me do let me do a video for that and put that out. That's a great idea. I appreciate that. Sweet. Yeah. Way to dodge that question. <laughs> I'm not or, I mean, to... <laughs> Way to redirect that question. I'm Thank you. That's a better I'm term. I'm just kidding, everybody. That was, that was me just picking on Aaron. Which he does uh, a great job but, uh, of. Yeah. I mean, if there's one thing I do well, it is make other people look bad. That's or good. It's a I don't skill. Know. Make me look bad. Uh, let's see here. So I'm kind of at the bottom of the page here. Uh, well, not quite. I mean, there's a handful of questions here. Step export sport. Okay, this came up a couple of times. People want to either bring in or take out step files from SketchUp. Step uh, files. So that's kind of a, a. I think that's not uncommon to go to CNC or to other ah. other things like that. I think the. I think the big answer, honestly, is Collada. Uh, I mean, I think I think we went with Collada back whenever we were doing Google Earth a lot because it was a universal format, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of ways to go from Collada to other stuff. There's not really a there's not a built-in uh, step solution. Maybe someone in chat actually already knows uh, has has some recommendations for going to step from from SketchUp. Yeah, I would say to, to give a generic answer is if you're looking for a specific file format and can't find it, look for an intermediary format because uh, there's very few uh, solutions out there that will only import or export one format because that's a silly, silly thing to do. Um, so anything that's requiring step will probably allow you to import some other geometry file also. And SketchUp yeah. has the ability to export 13 different formats, I think. 
And Collada is a very yeah. popular one. OBJ, DXF are other ones. Um, yeah, so you might look at that intermediary file format. Or, and check out, uh, but check out Simlabs. Because Simlabs yeah, has... Yeah, Simlabs is probably your... I think Stim, Simlabs does do step, too. I believe so. Um, Simlabs does something insane, like 26 different file formats. Um, but they are all paid extensions. So if, yeah. if that's an important part of your business, check out Simlabs. If it's something you want to do just kind of as a hobby, then look at an interme intermediary file format. Uh, okay, so the question is, or the statement is, there's not a shortcut for grouping objects in SketchUp, and they're wondering if there's an alternative. That's Taz and Pulak in there, Twitch asking that. There is whatever shortcuts you want. Any step can have a shortcut. So if I want specifically to group something, so I want a shortcut. So, because if I grab this right now and I hit G, uh, that's by default a shortcut to make a component, uh, to make a, a gum component, because G. So if I wanted to grab another letter, let's say I wanted to make um, N, does N do anything? No, so N's not a, N is not attached to a uh, shortcut on my machine. So what I can do is I can come over to Preferences. Preferences under SketchUp on, Win on Mac. It's in the Windows menu on Windows. And you can go to Shortcuts and find that. So if I go to Group, Make Group right now, and I wanted to make that be N. I just hit N. And now if I come out here, grab this geometry, hit N, it's now a group. So there is a shortcut for any command you want. The thing to remember, this is better than it used to be, but when you come in here to preferences and you go to shortcuts and you look for the shortcuts, um, sometimes stuff won't show up in here because it is context sensitive. So if I'm in the middle of a process that doesn't afford me the shortcut that I want to get or the command I want to get to, it might not show up right here. So you do have to be like in the spot in SketchUp where that, that command is available. But yeah, you can assign any shortcut to any key or key combination you want. So anytime we say that it's it's not there, it's not part of the default set, that's probably true, but it, you can assign it to whatever you need. What's handy is that Araya was also asking if they can hotkey a pull-up tool to use without having it display on the toolbar. I don't, I'm, maybe they meant push-pull. But so same, basically the same question. Yep. Is if you've got a tool you want to use, you can assign a shortcut and not use the icon. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, at some point you run out of key combinations. Well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because you, you can do multiple, you can do multi-modifier keys. So you can have shift option command. So that means, so you start off with 26 letters times 1, 2, 3. 26 Ooh, times math. 3 is math. And then when you start doing modifiers, you have like, there's like, uh, lots yeah, I bet there's more modifiers than there are commands in SketchUp, but someone else will have to do the math on that. Well, but you can also use modifiers on extensions once extensions are. That is true. That's right. So, so I actually have a uh, solid inspector is connected on my machine to Shift S. So if I hit Shift S, it brings up solid inspector. And that's not native software. That is an extension also. So yeah, you're right. You can probably start putting in extensions and exceed. But number keys, I think you can assign. That would be dangerous. Don't do that. Don't assign number keys to shortcuts because then you can't type. <laughs> type in lengths. <laughs> but yeah. So this is this is a question that's a little bit loaded. Is is there a way that I can make multiple groups UV mapping look continuous? Example is there are multiple walls side by side. Each wall is an individual group. How can I make all te textures look continuous? Um, just manually go. You have to manually go into each group and move the texture as far as i know and we don't yeah we don't do uv mapping that too so i know there's you there's uv mapping extensions but i think those function on one group at a time so if you wanted continuous uv map across multiple pieces i think you'd have to put them all into one group and connect them but i don't know that to be sure um, but i know there is sketch uv and uh wrapper are both um UV extensions. I just I just haven't gotten into them very much. But I think, like I said, just love the the natural look of white and gray. I, you know, as a designer, I I do like just the pure simple look of lines and faces. 
I think that that looks nice. I mean, rendering's cool, but here, so here's the thing about rendering. I'm not talking rendering down, but the goal of rendering is to make something look like normal life. And maybe that's my disconnect is like, I don't, I don't want stuff to look like real life. I want it to look better than real. And that's where I, I think things like uh, uh, ambient occlusion rendering is so, just looks so cool. Like where it's that, it's the monotone, but you've got that, that shadowed look. Oh, so, so cool. magnifico. Um, so yeah, rendering's awesome. People who do rendering, I, I, maybe I'm a little bit, you know, jaded because I'm not very good at rendering. I just, I haven't put the time and energy into it. Uh, but, but I like my, I like my work to be better than real. <laughs> nice. That... Every time you say it looks like real life, I just start singing uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. That's not bad. Mm. Uh, J Jotesh wanted to know how to create terrain on a sloping site. See, this is what I'm more used to with a lot of these FAQs is, or these, these Q&A sessions is someone wanted to know how to do a thing, and you're hardly modeling at all. That's right. Um, and it's fine. It's so modeling. there's... It... Just... <laughs> I would say that really depends on what information you have to start with. Because if you have something like, uh, you know, pulling in um, topographical information, there's extensions out there that can take like topo lines and stitch them together. You can do that with sandbox tools or something like uh, topo shaper. Um, if not, if you're just straight up just drawing up uh, a shape, you can use sandbox tools natively. So I can come in here sandbox tools I'll go ahead and create what I forgot I set my grid very small so uh, we'll make a little tiny thing here um, and then what I can do with that is I can come in let's make this more like uh, here's where I can just I can adjust geometry in big sweeping shapes like this. And then once that's good, I can adjust my geometry back down. So we'll go to half that size, make much more, you know, finer details then. And I can also pre-select geometry. So I can come in here and say, grab this piece and then move just that geometry up or down. Um, so yeah, sandbox tools is your friend if you're creating geometry from scratch, or even if you're not creating geometry from scratch, if you create an ordered grid, um, you can really play with it and, and make changes to it with sandbox tools also. Uh, yeah. So as I'm scrolling through, I'm seeing lots and lots of great responses about shortcuts. Uh, YouTube says he has 200. Nice. Shortcuts. Jeez. I have a hard time remembering like the top seven. So, <laughs> well, shortcuts are shortcuts are funny because it's very uh, personal, right? Because like Tyson and I have had many discussions about this. You guys who have watched Tyson know he uses a tablet, so he's got his hand on his tablet over here, and he his other hand comes over and sits right here. So all of his shortcuts are on one half of his keyboard. And then he stacks up those half the keys with modifiers to put his commands that he uses. Um, I tend to have gone the other way where I try to stick as much as possible with the default shortcuts just because when I present, I don't have my key logger on today, but why don't I have my key logger on? Oh, yeah. No. I didn't even notice that. It's because you didn't need it for a podcast. That's, that's right. All right, let's turn that on. Um, there we go. Uh, so I like to, I like it to show those default, uh, clicks. There we go. That's one. Um, so if I'm going to use push pull, you know, I like to make sure P shows up down there, but it's all totally about your workflow. What commands do you use regularly and you know, which ones you need quick, uh, the ability to get to quickly. I think. I think I, I think I'm kind of caught up here. So Philip H. Uh, I'm mean, first of all, I was asking for a future version of SketchUp. He says he gets a lot of models that have been built in vec in VectorWorks in a VWX format. Wants to know if if there's a way to uh, 
if there's any support coming for importing that directly? And if not, then is there another workaround? Or what is the best way to get from VectorWorks to SketchUp? Um, if you're in contact with the person making your VectorWorks files is to ask them for one of the formats that's compatible. Um, I don't know VectorWorks well enough off the top of my head to say, but I'm sure they export DXF, uh, IFC. Yeah, he, said he said he asked for DWG, but sometimes that's not an option. But that, So then that comes back over to, uh, is it possible that, wait, what was the name of? SimLabs? What was that importer? Yeah. SimLabs may make it, uh, that was my next step, was, was check and see if SimLabs has a VectorWorks importer because they have, like I said, an insane number Really, it all comes down to, can a Vectorworks file be read outside of Vectorworks? Because there is some software, like Revit's the big one, um, you can't author or read a, vector, or a Revit file unless you are Revit. So if there's a totally proprietary file format, so any import-export has to be done by them or with their code. So uh, yeah, check, check, check SimLabs because I assume you're using Vectorworks for work-related projects, so it might be worth paying for an extension to make it easy to import and export those files. Um, so I just have to call out, this isn't even a question, but YouTube YouTube pointed out that he, it was a typo. He didn't mean 200, he meant 100. So not quite as many, but he said that he's got them linked up to uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking. Ooh. And he literally just says what he wants to happen, and then it does it. That's pretty cool, because that's so. so um, that's kind of kind of like the way the the shortcut keys on a on a mouse. Uh, whether you're you have shortcuts on your regular mouse, or you have something like a three D mouse where you have shortcuts. All the all the shortcuts that happen here are just triggering the key events that happen over here. So yeah, there's. Lots of ways you could actually make those those uh, commands happen, and it's all about making those shortcuts and then triggering them. That's pretty cool. I never thought about that. That makes a lot of sense. Probably would work less well for a situation like this because then I'd be like talking. Uh, well, well, when you go to push pull, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> uh, yeah, be, be selective I about when I those work. I don't say okay, Google very often, but when I do, <laughs> somebody's listening. <laughs> And she's talking to me right now. Yep. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, we could we could jump over to the forum post then. Sure. That uh, uh, Andy had posted a while ago. It says he models large poultry processing factories, and would like to know if there's a way of setting if there's a setting inside of SketchUp that prevents proxies from appearing in a large model. Nope. And he's got an image of a one versus what one looks like. And it's, he's often having to wait for it to reload. So I might tab over to the... Okay, so let's speaker. talk about proxies real quick. Um, we're going to make... We're going to take Sumele here, and we're going to make a proxy for her, and we're going to swap her in and out real quick. All right, so this right here is Sumele. If I go to my components right now, it's the only component in the model right now is Sumele. So Sumele is not... Like, this component's not super heavy. It is, there's a lot of lines in here. These dots, if you look at these dots, you know, there, there's quite a few lines, but it's not super heavy, but we're going to pretend we want to try and make something lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a quick component that's about the size of Sumele. I'm going to take that. I'm going to make a component. I'm going to call it Sumele Proxy or Proxed. Proxy. There we go. All right, so now I have two components in this model, Sumele and Sumele proxy. So what I can do is work with this uh, so there is an, there's 99 or 100 proxies now for Sumele. So I'm going to take Sumele out of here. So since it's just a box, it's a real simple simple face you can see it's, you know, super performant, right? This 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 is a trick I'd use for uh, anybody or recommend for anybody who's doing landscaping in SketchUp, right? Once you get the big, a huge killer for SketchUp is all the geometry in 3D vegetation. So if you're, you want to have this where I'm, okay, so I don't, 
always need this showing, but I need to know where they are, this works. So I create my proxy, now I go on and do my modeling, and then when I'm ready to show what it is I'm putting a proxy in for, so this means I'm exporting to rendering, or I have my scene set up and now I want to show uh, what the, that actually looks like, I can come in here and I can say, okay, grab one of these, and in fact, with something like Selection Toys from TomTom, Tom, which is a free extension, I can go to Instances and say, Select All. So select all instances throughout the whole model of my Sumele proxy, and come over to Components, right-click on Sumele, and say Replace Selected. And that's going to immediately put 100 Sumeles in instead of my 100 boxes. Want to switch them back? Again, I can select one. I can say select all, go to my proxy, right click, replace selected, and now I have just those boxes. So I know it's, it was a weird example because we're talking about replacing a face me with a 3D box, but you can imagine if Sumele was like a piece of machinery or a tree with 10,000 leaves drawn on it, um, that could be pretty heavy. So replacing it with just a box is a great way to save time and it's super simple to swap it out with components. And like I said, the extension selection toys is huge. And that's one of the things it does. It says select all instances of a component. So that's what I would do, especially, yeah, looking at your image on the forum, you have a lot of repetitive geometry that looks like it's nice and detailed, good stuff. If you want to just replace that with low poly versions, you could just swap them out on the fly using the components window. Sweet. He had another question in line, actually, about right. the, wait, where was it at? The drop-in place functionality for place, or drop-on surface for placing oh. foundations. Yes. What about it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> uh, are you talking about drop? He said, what is the drop-on surface thing for placing foundations? Is that is that a thing in SketchUp? I'm not familiar with that. So there's a couple of extensions that drop. So you can, if I have something like a landscape and I want to put trees on it, I can put the trees all, draw them all in one plane and just tell them to drop down, which is a little bit quicker than trying to manually put them on there. Um, so there's a couple of extensions. There's drop GC. I think there's one just called drop, um, drop to surface maybe. Johnny Lemire suggests paste in place. Stamp in the sandbox sandbox tools is Dave's suggestion. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm not 100% sure what you mean about what the question is. Yeah, the 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 I'm I'm a little confused about the foundations and dropping. Yeah, I, Christian I Ryan know. mentions Smart Drop. That sounds like it's one of the extensions. So yeah, yeah, and it sounds smart. So sounds like there's something out there for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, scrolling back up here. Bill Farrell is wondering about using SketchUp on the iPad Pro, or is it only Mac and PC? So right now, we, we don't have... So if you want to run SketchUp on uh, an iPad, you, we do have the viewer, which is literally just the viewer. But it is an XR viewer, so you can do like place things and walk around in 3D, which is very cool. If you want to actually model, you have to use the web-based version, uh, which works okay, but ideally it still works best with a mouse. So we do have people who are using the iPad Pro and taking advantage of what it is, but they're using a Bluetooth mouse connected with it because we don't have the UI in there for, you know, like uh, gestures or anything like that. So that's the, the best option right now for running on the iPad. So I think, I think this one is, I think I understand this one. So how do you increase a small object's render quality with a big object in the background, like profiles on the walls or windows or some geometry on the walls? And if I'm assuming that means he wants it to look clear. I don't, I don't know. That sounds like it's a rendering engine question, like setting field yeah, of view be. inside the renderer. Um, yeah, I was thinking it could also just be turning off profiles or something like that so that it's not. But yeah, that question probably needs a little, a yeah. little for further clarification. Yeah, if, I mean, and, and unfortunately, because 
we what does SketchUp still work with like two dozen different renderers? Um, every renderer works a little different. It sounds like you're talking about like making something clearer up front would be a a rendering engine thing. So yeah, I don't know. Um, let me double check. There's not any new questions that popped up over on the forum over there. I don't think so. Everybody's just talking about handies. Um, so I just saw one go by from dcube42 asking about a wish list to uh, developers. It's actually our product management group who takes those in. And there is a feature request section of the forum where you can put your requests in. And I will tell you this, um, our product managers do watch those, those posts all the time. Um, like Jody and I, they're not allowed to, to promise when something's going to come out. Um, but the more information and examples you can give, the better. If you go into feature requests and go, um, you know, I want red buttons, exclamation point. That will get everything it deserves. If you go in and say, um, you know, I have an issue with the way this works and here's what my workflow looks like. Right now I have to go about this and it would be nice, it would be easier if this was, was the thing. That will get further than just going in and saying you like something or you don't like something or you want something different. The other thing I'll recommend, and this is as a former product manager myself, um, when you go in, offer to explain what you want, offer to explain your workflow. Um, a lot of times people come in thinking they want a solution that looks like this, but if we step back and look at what you're trying to do with it, it's possible that the product managers will find the solution is actually something over here that will help you, but in helping you this way, it also opens up to you know a bigger solution that helps even more people. So um, yeah, go into, go into feature request for SketchUp or Layout or SketchUp for Web. I think all three of them have their own feature request and put something in there and define what you're trying to do. And uh, <clears throat> like I said, our product managers will keep an eye on those, those uh, topics. <clears throat> All right, typing just one sec. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Pardon. Okay. Um, okay, while you're doing that, uh, Peter over on Facebook is asking if 3D mouses work with MacBook M1. I don't know. I don't have an M1, but I would imagine so. Everything with the 3D mouse comes down to the drivers from the manufacturer. So if you're looking to get one and have a new notebook, I would recommend going to 3D Connection or the fabricator of the mouse you're looking at and asking them before you buy because uh, it's all on them. We Actually, we don't even... It's like the software that runs on or for the 3D mouse is an extension created by the creator, so we don't actually have any uh, any involvement with that at all. It's us. That, it's us. It's them, not us. That's right. It's not us. It's them. So, uh, Robert also on Facebook said he has a common issue where he gets drawings from homes that are usually to scale in PDF, and he has to convert it to JPEG. I was wondering if there's a a better way to do that. So I'm assuming you're on Mac if you're not just importing the PDF directly. Um, I think that uh, John Brock has an extension that's a PDF importer for Windows. So you might want to take a look at that. Um, I haven't used it myself. I do most of our work on Mac. Mac natively supports PDFs. Um, but yeah, check that out because I'm assuming if you're converting from PDF to JPEG, it's because of that issue where we can't natively uh, it support looks like it. There's a little bit of, of plot twist. He says, oh. is there a way, a way to take a PDF to scale site plan and get elevations or any automation in making the base from that plan? Check out so that John Brock's. Check out that emperor. Yeah. Check out his. Trace, tracing seems like it's probably still your your answer though right yeah you know so anytime people are I, I get it everybody wants wants to do their work as quickly efficiently as possible um so getting mm -hmm. in line work and having it automatically show up seems like it's such an awesome thing um scales one thing if you can assure scale that's awesome a lot of times pdfs 
aren't actually vector geometry. Um, so with a PDF, you can export or you can create PDFs that are vectors, which means they come in and they come in as lines in the SketchUp uh, if you can get that PDF directly imported. But a lot of times PDFs are actually just imagery. So even though they show lines, those lines are just a bunch of dots in the PDF and the PDF doesn't actually have vector Im information. So no matter what you do, no matter how you get that PDF in, it's never going to turn automatically into lines. Um, so one thing you can do if it is a vector PDF is you could open it in Illustrator and then export a DWG from Illustrator. Yeah, and, and people I've seen people do the same thing with like Inkscape, which is a free vector editing program. Um, that's, a, that's an option too. So yeah, so there's options. There is options out there. Yay, options. Um, there was a lot of chit chat back and forth about the drop on the, the foundation question. Ah, did we, did we figure it out? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think, I think he's basically looking for either Draper stamp from Sandbox okay. Tools. Awesome. Uh, Barry, I'd like to know if you can show how to color lines. Yes, I can. All right, we can, we can probably get rid of these right now. Um, I, I find like in these these modeling sessions, I end up uh, drawing a lot of cubes. And I, I just want you guys to know, it's because it's such an easy way to get geometry on the screen and, and it works better than working on something flat on the ground. So uh, I'm gonna go to styles and go to edges. So I'm gonna say edit my, my style, go to my edges. And right now we still have color by axis turned on. So it's gonna color based on what axis it's parallel to. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to by material. Um, so with by material turned on, I can come in here and I can say color. I'm going to grab a color that's not used already. So uh, I'll go to my markers and grab a nice red maraschino. And I can literally, with that turned on, just color lines. Obviously, that's not ideal. It takes a while to line up right on the line and click. Very steady hand. So a couple things you can do here. One is with an extension. I can do something like select all of these, right click select only edges and it's only going to show me the lines and then I can come in and color that and now if I deselect they'll all be selected. Um, likewise I can also come in here to view uh, wireframe. Wireframe is going to show me only the lines so this makes it a little bit easier to just come through and say okay I want th this one to be blue, this one to be blue, I want a couple of these to be yellow um, and I can actually just color the edges just like that. Wireframe is temporary because I can come in here at any point and then go back to base style and say, pull up all of the things again. And then I can see that those, those colors hold on. It, it does depend on you changing the color of your edges to buy material first though. Uh, so Nathan wants to know, how does this section fill decide what to fill? Section fill doesn't fill all groups when cutting sections through a house. All floors and roofs are individual groups, so it makes it makes it it didn't work well when he's trying to do a whole house. So it all comes down to what you put in front of it. Um, so what do I mean by that? So let me let me make a thing real quick. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. I'm going to offset. I'm going to make some fake walls. All right, so if I was to come into this piece right now and I'm gonna go ahead and put a section plane on here, slap it down right there. And as I start to move that through, it cuts it like that. This is what I want, right? So let me go make something that's not good. I'm gonna uh, deactivate this real quick. And then I'm gonna put a roof on here something like this, all right? So if I activate this now, it shows me, all right, that's still looking good. Um, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make that a group. And I'm gonna say that there's like a, maybe a beam or a structural detail, something like that dropping down inside here. So that's gonna look like something like here. I'm gonna say I have something like this. And, all right, 
so say I got something like that coming through inside the house. All right, now, when I activate my cut, I start pulling this through, and when I cut that, it doesn't show that as filled. The reason it doesn't show as filled is because I it only has three sides, right here, here, and here. So what section cut does, it looks at geometry and it says, when I cut this, if I trace around the connected geometry, does it close? So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete my roof. I can see this little beam I put in here doesn't have a top, so it doesn't close. So there's no way for section cut to look at this geometry and think, oh, that should close right there because it doesn't. So it is all about proper modeling. So again, this, the same, same answer we had before, how do you make sure that your model doesn't have outward facing uh, or backward faces? Don't model backward faces. How do you wanna make section cut look like something solid? Make sure when you model things, they're solids. So I know it, it's, it's, there's not like a secret like, oh, just push F5 and it'll figure it out. Um, so that, that is kind of what happens. So one of the things you can do, if I undo a couple times, you can sometimes say troubleshoot section fill and it will come up and it will show you where's the issue. So right, right here, it's recognizing it's not closing. So it's giving you these little, little error messages right here saying I have some open geometry that ends here and here where hopefully you can, you know, kind of dig down into the model and figure out where those issues are, but it's not going to come up and go, oh, what you meant to do is make this a solid and here's how you do that. So that's, uh, that's the solution. But there is, like I said, there's, that is kind of a nice tool to be able to go in there and, and uh, check that. Mm. <clears throat> well, we're sort of, we're sort of getting down into, I guess people sort of fine tuning on stuff. Um, All right. Gavin, Gavin did ask if there's a way to show dimensions of radius and angles in the basic software tools or if there's a good free extension. I, I don't know of an, there's, there's not, I mean, unfortunately, once you get in here, you can do things like, um, I can use the protractor to see on the screen, what is the angle from here to here? And it'll tell me down in the, the, the box down below that this is 90 degrees right here. Um, right, right here. This is awkward here. But uh, as far as dimensions, dimensions are linear. You can do angle dimensions in layout where you can say uh, this line to this line, what angle is it? But there's not a way to pull like radius dimensions, like how long is this curved line? There's not a way to do those kinds of dimensions. I don't know of any, any extensions that do that. So that's the short answer is, is not that I'm aware of. So you can oh. look at dimensions, but that's it. Oh, if you do have, if you, I do have an arc. So if I put an arc here, I can select that arc and see the full length of that arc in entity info. But uh, again, as far as putting a dimension on there, uh, nothing that I know of. Um, I'm sorry, I know, I know I'm probably stepping on your toes, but every once in a while I see something pop up uh, somebody's asking about clipping issues. Generally speaking, clipping issues happen because of two things. One is if your camera is in parallel projection, uh, people will get this a lot more than if they are in perspective. SketchUp was kind of designed to be used in perspective, so parallel projection can cause this issue. Just go to camera and hit perspective, and a lot of times it'll fix those issues. If you're getting it a lot in this view, it usually has to do with uh, scale of your model. So either you're working very small on a big model or on a normal size model, you have some information that's super far away. And when the camera, when SketchUp has to calculate your view, having uh, your view have to extend to, you know, that extra geometry that's two miles from the camera, it can cause issues with clipping. So usually clipping is because either you're, you're in that per, or parallel projection which clipping a lot of times isn't the wrong thing. If you keep coming this way, my head eventually is going to poke through that geometry because 
is 3D geometry. It just happens uh, in an unexpected way if you're in that parallel projection a lot of times. So that's something to, check, to, to look at. Um, so we're, that's pretty close because the, the next question was actually two, two responses above that, which was, how can I use the same texture as multiple individual textures? Just duplicating it uh, makes the same texture and he wants to make them unique or should he make them unique after duplicating it? Um, so the reason you would want to make a texture unique is because you want to use it in a different way. So if I come in here and I'm going to go back to that brick texture. Actually, I'm going to grab a new texture because I already I want to use a texture I haven't used or haven't messed with. So let's go look at um, something that's easy to see. Okay, here's here's a flagstone texture. So if I want this texture to wrap around this whole building, there's no reason to make this texture different from this texture. If I want to position it, I can right click, I can say position texture, and I can move it to kind of line up my bricks on the corner or something like that. So that's what I would do rather than making it unique at this point. Um, and I, I would leave it like that. Where I would want to make it unique is if for whatever reason this one I want to, um, uh, so if I come in here, oops, I had edges selected there too, texture, position texture, if I do something like, oh, I'll make it bigger like this, and then for whatever reason, I want that exact same scale over here, um, but I'm trying to think, if I pick this and I add it here, see it shows up as the same, it shows up as the same when I, when I drop it. So if I want that same big scale to show up, I might have to do something like, uh, um, well, if I make it unique though, now I could go grab this and apply it here and it will show up as that bigger scale. Uh, the other thing would be if I came in here and I wanted to take this texture and I wanted to change the color of it. So I want the same flagstone texture, but I want it to be green rather than red. Uh, that's a spot where I might go um, make unique. And then I can take that texture, double click. And then I can come in here and change the color. Oops, I made the wrong one. I made the one that I didn't grab green. That would be a reason I would want to potentially make that different. If you're just applying the texture to different faces in a model, there's not really a reason to make it unique unless you're going to be editing it. So um, my short answer would be don't make it unique unless there's a reason to. Because you can position it, move it around, rotate it, whatever. You can distort it however you want and still have it be the same texture. Excellent. Man, it's, we're still, we're, apparently we set the theme because textures is, is definitely still, uh, still dominating. That works. Uh, most, most recently, there is the question of, does SketchUp save bump or normal maps if saved natively in the SketchUp library from V-Ray or InScan? I, Short answer. I don't think so. I don't think it saves it into, I believe, and I'm not, I'm, this will have to be verified, but I believe what happens is if uh, uh, somebody else makes that bump map from your texture, I believe it just flags it and recognizes that material coming out. It's possible that it's, it's injected in there, but I don't think so. I think that is a, a function of the actual uh, renderer and not part of the, the information that's in here. You can, most renderers have render ready materials that you can put into SketchUp, but what happens is when you go to the renderer, the renderer recognizes the name of that material and applies the reflection map or bump mapping to it and renders it. Um, I don't think that, that that is present in SketchUp. I, I'm fairly certain that's the answer. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't believe that information exists in there. Yeah, I started to type a similar answer and realized there, there, could, be, there could be more there. So hopefully yeah. someone in chat could confirm, but if not, uh, maybe the forum. Uh, da, da, da. So Philip H one said, you seem to typically work with a minimum of toolbar buttons turned on. Is that your preference or because you're using a Mac? Too many buttons make SketchUp sluggish to open, but what is too many? 
Yeah, I don't know that I don't know that buttons necessarily affect yeah, opening SketchUp so much as how many extensions you have because every active extension loads when you start SketchUp. So if you have their buttons turned on or off, it still has to load those extensions. Um, I know right now when I start it, I don't have a ton of extensions, but I know right now when I start SketchUp, I have probably a three second delay as it loads extensions. Um, and too many is going to vary. It's going to depend on the right. on the extension, right? The Bezier curve is going to be pretty light. Yeah. And a Fredo tool is going to be heavier. Dark. Yeah, it really, that all comes down to, uh, that, and that a lot, a lot of that comes down to your computer, I guess, <laughs> how much it's going to show up. Um, the, so as far as my toolbar goes, uh, I, because I do show the software so much, I try to keep what's on the screen simple. Um, I know people on Mac who have their floating toolbars and have them all over the place. I tend to only load up the tools that I'm going to be showing at the time. So I try to keep my UI as clean as possible. Um, so you guys have seen my screen in videos. It pretty much always starts out looking like this where I have just my default toolbars. Plus a, I did add a couple that aren't part of the, no, actually, I don't think since I've gone 2021, I've edited my toolbars. Um, so I try to keep minimal on the screen, um, but that's just a preference primarily because of what I do for my job, which is show people SketchUp. So um, I know in the past when I've, when I, when I sit down myself to go in and work on something in SketchUp, I'll turn on just the toolbars that I know I'm going to use. So if I'm doing organic modeling, I'll have quad face tools and sub D turned on. Um, if I'm doing, you know, I'm playing with sandbox tools, I'll have the sandbox tools turned on. Generally speaking, I like to have as much of my screen dedicated to, you know, the model and not have to eat it up with toolbars. Yeah, I get, I get confused if I get too many toolbars anyway. That is also true. Uh, I'm trying to decide this question. Christopher was, oh, no, wait. Uh, yeah, I was going to do this one. Uh, so Ray Lord on, on Facebook said, I want to know if there's any chance that the SketchUp tags can recognize the, an AutoCAD layer. Which I think it does, right? Tags can recognize them? Or you're saying like if you import, if you import layers should get converted to tags. Yeah. And, and I think that's, that's the extent of that question. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Christopher said the follow me tool used to clean up at the start along the edge when removing profile. The last few releases keep the start start profile needing to be cleaned up. I don't think anything's changed with the follow me tool. Yeah, I have. I don't remember reading anything about a change. So um, maybe it's you. Maybe you've changed. Because I don't know. Be, yeah, I, there's yeah, there's not. I haven't heard any known issues, and I haven't seen anything as far as a change in that. So there's no reason that the functionality should have changed. I mean, it's it's definitely something. If you have multiple versions, and you can can again, not saying you're lying, not saying you're not right, but uh, as far again, Jody and I pretty much our knowledge of changes is the documentation of what uh, the development group says changed. So I don't remember ever seeing anything that said that that changed. Um, but if, if you have, if you take the exact same model, multiple versions, see different things, we'd love to see that. Get, the, get that up onto the forum for sure. Uh, so he clarified, said 2016 used to delete the starting profile. Since then, it doesn't. So but yeah, I would bring that up in, I guess. I come oh. in here, if I grab these lines and I say actually go all the way around so if I say tools follow me and click this it did get rid of the starting profile so I don't know maybe maybe it's a if you can show I would love to see an example I guess again not not yeah, saying probably yeah it's worth it's worth taking the question I suppose to the forum Mm -hmm. maybe with examples yeah that'd be cool uh and it's it's possible too that it's happening in certain cases um so yeah absolutely get get that get an example up on the forum because that, that'd be good to see let's 
So Lawrence was asking, if you're not using a 3D mouse, what's the best way to peek inside of a shape? As you get close, movements get slower and slower, which is a time waster if you do it a lot. Um, either a section plane. So if I come in here, if I want to look inside the building, see that glorious green brick I created? Um, so grab a section plane, but, but there's a step there. So I put this here. I can move that in. Um, and then uh, hide the section plane. So hidden, hidden geometry and hidden objects turned on. There we go. So you just want to map a map shortcut to section plane. Right. So then I can then I can move around here freely. Uh, depending on where I want to peek inside, if I want to peek inside like here, I want to look inside of the side of this thing. I'm a big fan of temporarily hiding geometry doing my work and then unhiding it. That is, of course, dangerous. Uh, as we saw in the comments of a recent video I did about hiding, um, some people lose that geometry. So uh, the other option, I guess you could tag it and turn the tag off. But uh, yeah, if you don't have that, the ability to navigate quickly inside of geometry, then I personally, I always did temporary hiding before I used a 3D mouse. I would grab geometry, hide it, do what I had to do, unhide, and then go back to what I was doing. Um, I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure if I'm seeing the question in this one. DQ said he often has customer data exported from CAD software other than Skip or 3DS, especially with window, window panes. It happens that panes are not transparent because inside of the faces have different textures says if he flips the normals and assigns the same transparent texture, it works, but sounds wrong. Do you know what's going on there? Um, yeah. Anytime you have a face, any face, it's got a front and a back. If you apply a clear material just to one side, um, that material can will just be just be transparent on that one side. So it sounds like whatever information you're importing, the transparency is on maybe the face and not the back. Um, the easiest thing is to just select all the geometry and then reapply the clear material to both sides and make it clear again. Because if you flip the normals again, you're looking at the outside and that will not necessarily render correctly. Um, unfortunately, asking how other programs export information is a rough one because every program exports information differently. So saying, how does CAD make clear materials in Windows? Uh, not, not real clear. Again, no, just because it's such a good way to pass information back and forth, that sounds like it's totally something you should head to the forum with. Post an example of a window that you get in your CAD files and let the users, let us, let us take a look at it and say, okay, here's the steps that I would go through to make that clear. Ha! Huh. Yeah, clear. Like a window. Um, yeah, something like that. Because I'm guessing, I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that that's what's happening. Because normally a window isn't a piece like this, right? A window is like this, where it's going to have, you know, a front, a back, and sides. And what can happen is the insides, if I poke my head inside here, the insides can be set to a material different than the opacity on the outside, which means depending on how you look at it or how you cut it, it might render different. So um, yeah, I would post an example up on the forum and let us, let us take a look. So Studio RT Cool had a, a good selection or a good suggestion. He said use selection toys to select just faces and then you can see front and back textures and entity info and change them all. Yeah, so if I come here, select only faces, and then I can come up here to entity info, and I can change individually. So what can happen is the backside can be set to something else. So what's happening is I'm actually seeing through, the, the front face right now is clear, but I'm seeing the backsides of all the insides. So that is definitely frustrating. So yeah, that's a great point if I come here. So when I select all of it, 
you'll see it does say question mark because right now I have edges and faces selected. So Studio RT Cool is absolutely right. I want to come in here, select only faces. Then I have the ability to change this and say, I actually want the clear material. And then now both inside and outside have the same material. Good call. Good call. Oh, Lawrence maybe clarified what that original, the follow me question from earlier. He said, if you draw a line and add a circle profile to use follow me to make a pipe, the line is left inside the pipe. Yes, that is, that is, as far as I know, that's always been the case. Unless if, if your path you're following creates an edge, it will still be there. So yeah, so if I come in here, And then I'll make a circle. Oh, I was like, why did my line stop prematurely like that? Because <laughs> I, I have a section <laughs> plane. Section plane. <laughs> Whoopsie. Right, let's get rid of that. So if I come in here with a circle, here, let's, let's do this twice. And put a circle right here on the center. And then I'm gonna do another one where I'll take this circle put it right there. So if I grab this, tools, follow me, follow like that, uh, if I get rid of this, that line is still there. And as far as I know, that's always been the case. I don't know that it's ever gotten rid of the path. Um, if I grab this one and I say, tools, uh, follow me, whew. So at that point, well, I guess it's still kind of there. It just makes it part of the geometry. Um, and I could get rid of it by softening and smoothening. Um, but yeah, I don't, and you, I, correct, I, I could totally be misremembering, but as far as I know, it's always left that path behind afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like uh, Colin even confirmed back in SketchUp 5. It's done that, so... It's not a new thing. Um, uh, so Wallace said, how can I use section plane and cross section to show layers maintaining their original color? I don't know if I understand what that is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I do. So maybe he wants to clarify that. Um, oh, are you, are you saying, so if you do something like, so if you, and by the way, somebody has to put, uh, a dollar in the layer jar. If I was to take Oops. this, add this to a walls tag, grab this guy right here, add him to a roof tag, um, and then color by tag, and then I'm, I'm trying to work backwards into your question, and then come in here and do another section plane. Are you talking about how my section cuts are all the same color and not colored by layer? Um, if you're asking that, there is not a way to change it. There's a universal uh, section cut, section fill color. It's it won't it won't recognize that that layer. If that's what you're asking. If it's not what you're asking, it's still true. <laughs> in, in either case, that is true. That is what's happening. Uh, our forger said, is there a way to apply multiple styles to a single SketchUp model, like applying multiple graphic styles in Illustrator? Yes, you can apply them one scene at a time. You can't view multiple styles inside of SketchUp at a time, though. So you can do them for, for things style. like like if you're going to export and composite something in, in Photoshop or, or something like that. You can have, I could have the same scene with multiple different uh, styles created for output, but when you're actually looking at it on your screen, you can only have one. I think there's a way to play with stuff, um, Sketch SketchFX, I think it's called. There's an extended extension, it's a pseudo rendering tool, and I think they may have a way to like uh, selectively show multiple but it still has to go through like a render and output. But on the screen, you, you only see one uh, style at a time. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, dum, dum, dum. A lot of people answering other questions here. So I love it. That's community right there. That's right. Is it possible to set project wide variables, e.g., ply underscore thickness equals 18 millimeters, and then use it as a component as attributes? That sounds like something more like a dynamic component kind of thing. Yeah, dynamic components. Ugh. I don't know where it would pull that information from is the only issue. Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. That's not to say that you couldn't work backwards into something like that, um, but I think a dynamic component will look inside of itself or in its parent. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to externally pull information like that. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, yeah. Uh, now, I don't see any other questions. I mean, oh. maybe there's some questions, but I don't see them. Bill just asked, what's the best way to use and adjust smooth and soften? He tends to overdo or underdo it. The result is spending ages getting it to look right. <laughs> um. I, yeah, I guess with a question, yeah, that, that's a tough one because it really depends what you're working on. So something straightforward like architecture like this, um, I would say probably anything under 30 degrees or so is probably what you want to set to, uh, you know, because I don't want to smooth off those. I tend to, so what I will tend to do if I have a more complex, this is obviously very simple geometry. But what I will tend to do is probably end up with more lines than I actually want. So I'll drop it fairly low. And then if I want to get rid of specific lines, I'll selectively go in and uh, use the smooth eraser tool to get rid of those specific ones I don't want. Um, so I that tends to be my workflow is to slide that. So very rarely, unless it's like a geometry that I just don't really care about that much because like detail or something that's off on the side, very rarely will I spend time, you know, like uh, one degree at a time figuring out what the perfect thing is. I'll just get to just above where I want and then clean it up with the eraser tool. So that's that would be my, my rule of thumb for how, how I'd do that. Thanks. That's great. That's a great answer. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Actually had a workflow for that one. Um, the, the modifier key for smooth, so shift is hide, smooth is option on Mac control on Windows, and that will, will smoothen, I know it's not a word, it will smooth the selected geometry. All right, I'm actually typing answers to some stuff here. All right. Uh, can you give texture materials for an elevator? Oh, wait, that reminds me of another one. Someone else said, was asking if there was an easy way to create, like they want to do their yard, but they don't have, uh, contour lines, but they wanted to be able to use the sandbox tools to create their yard. Um, That's yeah, tricky. I guess. I don't know how you would pull information by yourself for something like that. Like, I guess you could ballpark it and same way I was showing before with the, that tool, just kind of pull it up a little bit in, in, I, I don't know. I mean, if, yeah. If there's enough, if there's enough terrain in your yard, then you could use import, uh, import terrain from. Yeah. Uh, the from geolocation. geolocation. Um, but that's going to be, I mean, what, plus or minus like five or six feet. So yeah. I guess if you have a graded Otherwise. yard that shows up in, in geolocation that that might be enough. Um, it's always yeah, hard or... because that's, I, I try not to get into the, this topic as much because unless you have like professional data, it's, it can be really tricky to do accurate landscape modeling when you don't have information. So if you're doing something like what Tyson did with the, with the Japanese temple, where he just kind of went up to a picture and said, okay, this kind of goes up in a mound here and this kind of drops down here. Um, where it's just kind of like sculpting. 
Dave said, use just survey this yard yourself with a tape measure and a water level. So if you know what those words mean, you could do that. <laughs> tape measure is a piece of tape, I think. That what? Yeah, it, it's a it's with a gauge you use to measure how wide tape is. I don't know how that helps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ashley wants to know if you're editing someone else's model and they've smoothed something, is there a way to unsmooth it? I think the word you want to use there is rough. Can I rough something? Can you rough rough in it? <laughs> um, yeah, so all the time I do this kind of stuff pretty regularly. I overdid it. Two options here. One is to grab all the affected geometry, come over here and toggle soft and smooth, and then manually re unsoften, re soften or re smooth. Um, that's one option. The other is you can actually manually set soften and smooth values by selecting them. So if I come into view, turn on my hidden geometry, I could come in here and select these lines. And then in entity info, turn soften, soft and smooth off. So that would be an option. Uh, so we have a, a bunch of late entries here with, with pretty simple questions. I like Can it. you give a tip on how to properly learn how to use SketchUp? Yes. Next question. <laughs> that is a very simple answer. <laughs> oh, did you want to know what the answer was? Uh, if you are new to SketchUp, I cannot recommend more going to SketchUp campus and taking the fundamentals course. Learn.sketchup.com, and when you head in there, there's a fundamentals, and it just, it's totally from the beginning how to start using SketchUp, and it is, it's probably the quickest, easiest, best way to learn it. Uh, if you're using, if you're learning for work, then, and it's, it's one of those things where you gotta get up and running as quick as possible, I, I highly recommend paying for training. I know a lot of people don't like doing that, um, personally, having been involved in different software companies for like decades now, cause I'm old, I'll say that if you find a good trainer, they're more than worth the money you invest into training. Um, so if, if it is, like I said, if it's just something you want to learn on your own, check out SketchUp Campus, check out our YouTube channel. We put up a lot of learning content, probably more than anybody else I know as far as how, how often we put up videos. Um, if it's something you're getting paid, for, your work is paying for, then look into a paid trainer, look into a third party, look into SketchUp schools or uh, who else does train, Master SketchUp or um, does SketchUp Essentials, Essentials offer training? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Look up those, look up those guys and, and cause a good trainer is worth every penny. So, uh, to return back to Ashley's question, she was wanting to know about unsmoothing in the free version. Oh, I, I think you can. I mean, the, the, the that same tool set, right? Yeah. As far as I know, everything is showed is there. Um, yeah, that should, that should all still they work the same way. Dave pointed out that he does training too. Oh, little, Dave Richards. self-promotion there. There you go. Absolutely. Dave is an awesome SketchUp user and a great teacher. So yeah, another guy who would be good to, uh, if you want to just get up and running and paying somebody to tell you. So here's here's the thing about SketchUp, just to, to derail for a moment, because we're hanging out. It's Friday afternoon. What else we got to do? Um, SketchUp is very easy it's a super easy tool to initially get up and running on it is it's quick to learn um, the tools are super super intuitive so uh, it, it is one of the fastest tools to learn to develop your own workflow and how you're going to use sketchup varies from industry to industry job to job person to person so the learning curve is very different because SketchUp is such an open tool. You can use it so many different ways that what happens is you learn to use the fundamental tools and then you start to develop your own workflow depending on what you want to do. So this is why I say that if you're using it for work, having somebody you can talk to like Dave who can say, okay, here's some advice on how you could develop that workflow is super helpful. Um, it's because it's that second step where people are like, well, what do I do now? Once I, okay, I got, I've got the, the fundamentals down. How do I move on? How do I get better making 
whatever it is in SketchUp. And that's, that's where you custom tailor and, and develop your own workflow and fine tune it. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to open it up in, in my, my copy of free to hey, you got see it. if I can do the unsmooth thing. You got it. You got there. Because Ashley, Ashley said she didn't see those options in Entity Info. So cool. I'll poke around here. Um, Are you looking at Chewy Productions? <laughs> no, I was reading <laughs> M Ads design up there which was, can you add more information into the section plane circular label other than the section plane symbol as shown in the thumbnail for your section plane square one video? Nope. So you have, when you create a section plane, you have two things you can put in there. One is the symbol, that's what gets put in here. And one is the name, that's what shows up in Outliner. Uh, Scroll, scroll. A lot of uh, a lot of positive feedback here. How yeah. do you handle inferring guides which are not coplanar? Inferring, just like you would infer a line. I think if this is what you're asking. So if I want to draw a line parallel to this, I hover over it, and then I get perpendicular. Same goes for guides. So if I create a grab this and pull it off as a guideline. If I want to infer off of that, all I have to do is hover over it and it should give me, oh, maybe not. Maybe I can't, maybe I can't. Is that because it wants you to just put a guide there? I guess that would, that would be my advice is stick a guide there. So if I need a guide that is parallel here, I would, put it where I need it, and then infer off of it there. Let's see, so if I come here, do I have a perpendicular snap? I don't use guides often enough, but um, it looks like you <laughs> cannot infer perpendicular or parallel to guides. Huh. So I guess the answer is put a guide there instead of trying to infer off of it. I mean, that sounds like a thing. Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't seem to unsmoothenate in, for, in the free version either. So oh. maybe, maybe we're wrong and ignorant. <laughs> Liars! <laughs> Not on purpose. Sorry, we would never lie on purpose. I, I, yeah, uh, it's ignorance of any. Okay, so now Chewy Productions. All right. Just watched your Sphere video. He doesn't know what he's doing wrong. We don't know what you're doing wrong either, though, because you're not. You need to tell us. Uh, so this I says I select the face and then nothing happens. So I don't know what you're, what's going on in your Sphere video, but I'm going to assume you can just walk through that process. You yeah. already did that. You made a sun. I did. So I'm guessing what's happening, generally speaking, when, when people say they can't get uh, the sphere video to work, the screw video to work, um, it's because of scale. Do this. Draw your first circle, type 10 foot or 10 meters, whatever you got. And then when I go to draw my second one, I'll pull that out like that. And then I can grab this, tools, follow me. Grab that second one and you got a sphere. Most of the time people run into problems are like, oh, the top of my sphere didn't close up or I hit it and nothing shows up because they're drawing their first circle, which is like half a meter or half a millimeter or something like that. SketchUp uh, was originally created to be an architectural tool. So it does have limitations on how small of detail it can create. So there is a limitation. It's something like 0.00 one or zero 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 one inches uh, it's very small but when you start creating segmented geometry like uh, tubes or spheres that those can get you know fractions of fractions of millimeters and it can't create that it can maintain them so here if I look at this so right now I have this this geometry right here is the smallest geometry so if I take a copy of this sphere and I scale it down 
like super, super teeny tiny. Let's go even, let's go even teeny tinier than that. So now I just created geometry that's probably sub millimeter. It still exists, it's fine, it can exist, but it can't create that geometry. So I wouldn't be able to draw this sphere at this scale, but I can draw it at a larger scale and then scale it down and it will maintain that, uh, that, that those faces afterwards. So try that, try drawing it 10 times bigger than what you're drawing now. Oh, there we go. Victor let us know that control shift erase will let you unhide. So let's try that. Um, so I'm on max, I'm gonna hit option shift. And let's see, let's hit these. Boom! I love this community. It's just the best. You guys are awesome. So hold down control shift or option shift, depending if you're a Mac or Windows, and use the eraser and you can unerase those edges. If only I could make that work on the free version. Oh, so no boom? First, first of all, whenever I hit control and shift while I have the erase, well, let's look and see here. Erase tool, option to smooth, shift to hide. There's not a there's not an unsmooth. Hmm. Why wouldn't we let you unsmooth? Sounds that doesn't seem like it has to be a pro only feature. Well. Hmm. Curse you, Aqua Scum. Kind of. Um, yeah. That's well. Is what it is, I guess. Is there an easy way to change all of the group tags to another group tag? You mean like move everything from one tag to another tag? Okay, so I don't know what just happened. Sorry, I completely just got derailed because Colin is over here telling me, how did I get that? Sometimes I get in and sometimes I don't. I um, got an option to unsmooth or unsoften and I don't know how I got that now. <laughs> I don't know how you got that either. <laughs> That's not fair. All right, so I'm going to make a couple tags while Jody works on that. <laughs> Colin, right. you should you should go and help Ashley because I, I apparently I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to grab some things and I'm going to put them on the tag things. I'm going to grab this thing and put it on the stuff tag. So what I could do is if you select an item, this this is an extension again. If you look at selection toys, which I know I've referred to this several times. It is one of the key tools that I use. It's, it's, I believe it is the first extension I reinstall every time I, I start up a new version of SketchUp. If you right click and go to select, you can say um, all on selected layers and it will select everything that's on the layer you currently have. Then you can just go to tag. I said L, I said the L word, dollar in the tag jar. And then I can change everything that's on the things layer, tag, dang it, to stuff. And then now those pieces that were on the things tag are now on the stuff tag. So it's pretty easy because that selection toys lets you select all on selected layers and it'll grab oh. everything and then you can just toggle all of it at once. Okay, so, sorry. Don't mean to jump in here. Oh, bring it on. Excited on you. Okay, so everyone's pointing out that it is possible. Uh, the problem wasn't, wasn't working for me because I'm on a Mac, but everybody, Dave confirmed that Control Shift Erase on PC does work to unsoften uh, edges. It should be on me, Option on the Shift. Mac. Yes. Yes. That. That right there. Option Shift with the Erase tool will, un, will unsmoothenate your edges. There you go, Ashley. Got it. Boom. We're there. Uh, Karsten said that we need to tell Tom Tom to change the name to say tag instead of layer in his yeah uh, one of his extensions. Yeah, it does still say layer. Gosh. I'm just glad he's not watching because I'm so upset right now. Yeah, he'll be rolling over in his bed right now if he knew. He probably is. 
Probably. Actually, so. probably not. I don't know what time it is there. Ten o'clock. Uh, he seems like a lit. He seems like a night owl. Yeah. Uh, okay. How can I com how can I convert a straight line in an ir in an irregular one without breaks? I want that straight line to become part of a, an irregular border of a model or volume. I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe weld. I don't know what you're asking, but weld. <laughs> well, weld sounds like a, a thing to do. So if I have something like a line here and then an arc and then another line like that and these are these are three separate pieces, I can grab all of them, right click and say weld edges and now that becomes a single curve instead of a straight piece an irregular piece. Is an arc irregular? And then another straight piece? Now they're all one curve together? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what irregular means in this case. Yeah. So maybe that was the answer to your question. <laughs> maybe so. Um, so I'm still looking, I'm still looking at, at some of these other answers about getting the unsmooth thing to work. Because sometimes I see a button to turn softening on and off. Colin said to open the display panel. Uh, but now I'm just being distracted by something that's already been solved. Hey, it's you're learning, Jody, despite your best efforts. You're it's, learning. This is weird. On a Friday afternoon of all times for this to happen. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Talking about extensions. Uh, Tiago asked if it's possible for one component with dynamic components. Is it possible for one component's attribute to reference another component's, component's attribute? I think you can do that as long as they are in the same component. So you can have a parent component and then smaller components inside, and then they can so Dave, reference each other. At the same names. time, you're yeah. At the same time you're saying this, Dave said he's tried for years and he doesn't think so. Yeah, I don't think you can reference anything that's outside of that component. So inside of a component, you could have something like a window with two panes. And if one moves, the other one moves with it. You can reference the same value. But I don't think there's a way to, for this window down here to reference the door over here, where if the door is open, the windows close or something like that. Uh, as far as I know, that's not an option. There, that, and that kind of goes back to that that other question: Is there a way to set global attributes outside of of geometry? And I I don't think there's a way to do that. Okay, uh, so I'm going back to Ashley's stuff because <laughs> not gonna let this go. <laughs> I, I, I think I think I finally reached a happy place. So you have to go to display, which looks like a pair of eyeglasses on the sidebar. And inside of there, you can check the box to show hidden geometry or hidden objects. Once you do that, then you have the ability to select that hidden geometry, at which point you then have the ability to click unsoften. You get the buttons for unsoftening. So you've got to make sure you've displayed hidden geometry via the display panel. That makes sense. It's a little, it's a little tricky. It's a little convoluted to get there. I keep trying to go up to my file menu, and there's not a file menu at the top, so that's what was messing with my brain a little, little little different um okay i'm putting that putting that one to bed Psh. all right moving on actually 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 figured it out the same time as me so <laughs> i wasted my time no that's it's called good, teamwork good enough. she had two that's brains right. on it uh native weld is not a 2021 native but it is native weld came about in 2020.3 or dot two yeah so for all intents and purposes, I guess, if you were getting it right now, it would be in 2020 or 2021. The downloadable version of either of those would have it. Yes. Uh, 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 Chewy wants to know, how do you cut the circle in half? All right, three steps. View, hidden geometry, select, Made this a group. Select, delete. And if you want to close it, you can just draw a line like that. Half a circle. So nice. Look at that. That's uh, a sphere. So now I'm assuming that was sphere since Chewie asked about the sphere I, earlier. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, 
Oh, Wallace, Debbie Wallace said, sometimes for certain shapes, follow, follow, the follow me tool will leave certain un unclosed triangles at corners. Why is that? Generally speaking, that is either scale or lapping geometry. Um, let me show you what I mean. So, so scale, it's the same thing I was talking about with the circle. If you're, if you're getting, uh, like going around curves or something like that, you have real small, like if, so if this arc is going around, it's like 90 segments around 30 degrees, it's gonna be really small. You'll probably lose geometry there. The other thing is if I take, something like I'm gonna go too big you know this there's this thing that that happens where you, you try to make problems like let me let me show you how something doesn't work <laughs> and sometimes on the fly like it never it doesn't work right but let's you're, see you're just so good you can't do I, it wrong i trying so hard to mess up Okay, so I'm gonna bring this curve around this curve and actually let's do this. Let's just make this curve. No, I broke it because it made a curve. Um, let's, let's try, say, follow me, that worked. Dang it, okay, let me, let me try again. Well, so how small are you? What, is, what scale are you working at? I mean, could you, do you wanna make this smaller? That's true, I could, I could have done that. That would have been the thing to do. I guess I've moved on. I'm gonna just get I'm just gonna get stupid right now and just stupid small to use a technical term that's used in design all the time. Stupid. And you small. said you need to put you need to put the curve on the inside. That would have done it too. Yeah. All right. Everybody's got answers. That's what I like. I like. All right. So if I, like I grab this the one, Q and A is not just you and me. Nope. It's, it's everybody. It takes a village. So well, that kind of made the thing. Wasn't exactly what I was hoping to have. It's a totally different problem, but uh, yeah, all my. You're right. Let's do. Let's do it. Let's try this. Let's try this two ways. Problems twice. Option. Bring it over here. We'll start by just. All right. Now, if I grab this. Tools. Follow me. Not small enough. Whoops. Let's try it now. Oh, come on. Let's do this. See, I just, I just can't, there we go. Okay, so some triangles didn't show up here because the geometry is too tiny. So that's the same thing I was talking about with the circle. It just didn't, it just couldn't make it because it's too small. So if that's the case, then you might wanna do something like, like this. And yeah, this is 24 segments. If I bump that to, or drop that to 12, then it seemed to work just fine. So when I did a follow me, that actually worked because the segments were just slightly bigger. So in here, if I look at this, like this geometry right here, less, way less than an inch uh, is super small. I wanna just, just cause I'm curious, I'm gonna cut this and paste it on the other side and see what happens. I think this is gonna work fine. Cause it's on the outside edge, yeah, it's gonna work super duper. If I go like this, which I think may have been what was being said. Nah, it's still big enough that it works fine. Um, yeah, so if follow me, that's basically, it is exactly the same issue as creating a sphere because the sphere is just a follow me that's going around a circle. Um, the issue is probably that it's too small. And it can't create that teeny submillimeter geometry more often than not when you got a hole in your geometry it's because it's tiny and that's the that's, solution is scale it up temporarily do your follow me scale it back down afterwards uh pretty quick solution
Um, so early on, so there's not a really, I don't see any any questions that are jumping out at me right now, but at the beginning, I don't remember who it was that asked, YouTube or maybe <clears throat> or somebody, what is the extension you are most afraid to use on stream? Flowify. I think it's an awesome extension and the stuff you can make it is so cool, but I use it so infrequently that I have to go back and watch the video to make sure I set it up correctly. It, it is an awesome tool. The stuff you can make with it is just, I love it. I love what it does, but every time I have to go back and remember how to use it. Um, and that's not because there's anything wrong with the extension. It's an awesome extension. I just don't use it often enough. So I always have to refresh myself on how to use it. Um, yeah, that's that's probably what yeah, super you, cool. You answered that. You answered that straight away. I because I were... I it's because I want to be better at it. I, what it does is so neat because you can take you can take a like a flat geometry or one geometry and you can go deform it to whatever path or shape you want to, and it is super super cool and I love it. I, it sucks. <laughs> like, it's there's so many times where I'm like, oh, Flowify would be cool for this, but I, dang it, I don't remember how to use it. So it's totally on me. But man, that that's the one that I always it always trips me up. Okay, thanks. That was good. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Uh, so Bill was wanting to know if Follow Me always breaks the curve. Um, I don't think it does actually, because if I look at this, okay, this piece, yeah, I guess maybe it actually does, because this was welded beforehand. Um, to it appear so. Look at this little there guy. Whoa, whoa, uh, he's too tiny. He's too tiny. So Ken, actually, in the spirit of the giant versus not, he said, what if you made a copy of a component, scaled that copy up, made the tweak, and that way you wouldn't have to worry about the scaling up and scaling down. You just delete your gigantic version afterwards. Yes, that is a technique we call the Dave method, named after Dave Richards, who was just on here. Um, right. That is exactly what you would do. Make it a component. Scale one component up, change it, then delete it, and the small component will automatically be updated. There you go. Yeah, Boom. it's good stuff. Uh, Max asked, at what point does the number of segments in a circle or segmented section become fixed, or can you always quickly adjust it after the fact? If there's any geometry connected to or affecting the circle or arc. So, that breaks it. so if I go like this, I can select and change how many I want on here. If I come in here, I come in here and push pull, I can no longer change it because now there's geometry connected to it. Arcs are a little bit different because arcs often have geometry connected to the end. So, you know, if I come in here, do this, and then I put an arc here, I can select this and I can change this to, to less. Um, but again, same thing. If I come in here and push pull, now even though this is an arc, I can't change the segments because there's connected geometry. That's the answer. Okay. That works. Um, I think that I think that might be everything. I think we we did yes. we did good. We done good. I suppose if, if if you have a question, you better ask it really really quick. Yeah, let's give this uh, should... with 12, 12 more minutes. We're out of here. 12, 12 minutes questions. Uh, Bill, <laughs> you can change the radius. Asks, yes, Bill, Bill. Yeah, okay. You can still change the radius of your. Again, as long as you don't change it, I can come in here and I can say I want this to be six, and we'll go to six. I want to make it one twenty. It'll go to one twenty. Same with the circle, too. If I have the circle over here, I can select it and make that change. Uh, are you reading that? Brad's question there? I don't understand what I'm reading. Can you 
And she will follow me round over on the inside edge of a hollowed out cube. Um, yeah, I'm probably. I feel like yeah, I feel, a lot of times, a lot of times you're better at this than me. Like I just, I literally just sometimes I'm literally just reading the words, hoping that they have meaning by the time they get to your ears. Uh, in this case, I don't have any round over on there. the inside top edge of a hollowed out cube. All right, so. A hollowed out. So first off, everything in SketchUp's hollow, right? There is no such thing as a real solid. If what you're saying is, can I round these corners out? Yes. What I would do if I wanted to do that would be draw a line like this, take that line, copy it down like this, poke my head inside, put an arc here. Then I could grab the top surface, tools, follow me, and grab that shape. And then that would round over the top. If that's what you're talking about, then yes. If that's not what you're talking about, then I don't know. Uh, Transom has a question about 3D Warehouse, but All you right. didn't ask it. That's tricky. Ask it. I see what you're doing. Mind games. Mm-hmm. Been modeling for over two hours answering questions. I'll mess with him. Um, but yeah, and then and what Colin pointed out too is uh, Fredo Corner does an awesome job of this kind of stuff. And you can you can do stuff with Fredo Corner that you can't actually do with Follow Me because uh, Follow Me needs a path to follow. Fredo Corner doesn't. It just needs a line with with edges or with faces connecting to it. Uh, so Brad re restated. So he says, draw a cube, push pull the center down, round over the inside edge. Oh, so you're saying this? Same thing. Um, yeah, it, it would work exactly the same. And just to show what. Uh, so you would just put that same geometry around it. If you wanted a half circle, you could do that too. You could actually come in here. Um, again, because I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Uh, but I could also take... Maybe? I'm not sure what this is going to do with the corners, actually. This might, get, this might be messy. I don't know if that was what you're asking, but yes, again. Okay, okay, no. All right. It's getting hot. It's getting sunset. Sun's getting pretty low, big guy. Yes. Actually, it's not. Oh, here's a perfect example. So say I want these lines to come all the way up. But because the angle they reach at, if I drop that far, look what happens. I go, ah, oh, get my lines back. In this case, I would probably just get my lines back like that and then grab my eraser and just alt erase these lines real quick to maintain uh, those lines. If that was, if this was the look, if this is the look I was looking for on the corner, like a frame or something like that, uh, then I would just spend a few seconds wiping these with a soft and smooth eraser. Whew, upside down for a second there. That's that's fancy modeling. Okay, so there's several several sort of clarifying different people thinking they they understand it. So Ken said he wants the inside edge rounded, inside upper edge rounded, which Brad then confirmed round over inside edge. Yeah, uh, it's it's the same thing guys, watch. It, it's just all it is is just just like I did over here. That would just be, you know, putting how far do I want to round it over? Create whatever that that uh, angle is. So create create my arc like that, and just grab the edges.
and then tools, follow me. Just like that. Uh, so Transom said, the question is about using models off the 3D warehouse and modifying them. Is it okay to post the modified model? And I think, it, yeah, I think it's basically the derivative works is kind of the, the key phrase, right? Yeah. So generally speaking, um, I'm not going to get into legal stuff, but uh, I would say if, if I was to take a model down, modify it, and post it back up, I'd probably at least give credit to whoever I downloaded the original from. Um, but yeah, the, the basic idea of 3D Warehouse is that models there are free to use and modify. There's nothing, there's nothing in 3D Warehouse terms of service or anything like that that says you cannot do that. There's nothing saying that you cannot repost back to 3D Warehouse after you've modified a model. Um... I mean, I've seen a couple of people say that they would like to see a chamfer or fillet tool, but that's just a that's just a feature request. Although you can use follow me pretty well as a You can. It's pretty easy. And then if, if you do want something like this, like I said, something like Fredo Corner. It's kinda of hard to well, that was a teeny tiny little thing, but I did it. Uh let's go bigger. like a really ugly, awkward hot tub. Let's make that bigger. There we go. Oops, I missed one. Um, yeah. So if you do need a lot of chamfer filleting kind of thing, then check out uh, Fredo Corner because it's super easy to use. I'm not. What is the radius edge? If what if the radius edge is not continuous? I. Don't understand the question. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I don't understand what you're. I think. Yeah. I think it's possible at this point that uh, post a picture on the forum and ask. Yeah, your your brain might be a little fried. My brain's a little fried, and so I keep. If if the question is if you want to do something like uh like crown molding is the kind of you know like where it's it's not just a radius it's it's multiple shapes follow me can do any shape you want so if you have something where you want to go around the outside and it's like a step and then a round part and then a step or something like that draw that profile and just trace whatever shape you want but yeah if if you uh if i would suggest going into the forum we're wrapping up now but uh head in the forum say show what it is you want to do oh well, let me give everybody here advice actually for getting help in the forum. I'm going to, I'm going to say this and maybe we can put this clip on the forum somewhere. The forum is an amazing spot to put your question in front of users all over the world who are doing everything you can imagine in SketchUp. It is an amazing resource and a great way to get help. If you want help, help people help you as much as possible. If you're trying to make something, but don't know how to, Share what you've tried to do and explain what you're trying to do. If you have an image of what you're trying to create, share the image. What is so frustrating for, for both you as the question asker and the people trying to help you is when you go up and you post a question like, and I'm not saying anybody's asking questions like this, but you know, how do I do champ how do I do chamfer look like goofy head? You know, that's the kind of stuff that goes up there and people are like, I don't know how to help you because I don't understand what you're asking. You put a put a picture up there and said, you know, this this shape, I'm trying to make this shape follow this thing, you will get an answer, I promise. But the help you can get is only as good as the question you ask. So remember that. Yeah, you, you will probably get an answer no matter what. The answer you get, the quality of the answer you get is highly dependent upon where you began. Right. So yeah, so like I said, help the answers help you.
so yeah, that that that's awesome. So if you want to try and sneak a last one in here, uh, W. Wallace just asked about a plugin that could help create screws and threads that he could pick an M4 and create it easily. Um, you might just okay. check 3D Warehouse and download an yeah. M4 screw. Probably, probably your best bet. But there was a there was a, a was it called Thread Creator? I feel like there was an extension where you could type in the specifics of like the angle and the gap and all the pieces and, and make it, but maybe not. Maybe that's maybe that's not thing anymore. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Cool. Well, it is officially two thirty, so uh, I think this is Pick where we opinion. call it. I think that was pretty good. That was, a, we that was fun. Answered, you, you made your way through a whole lot of questions. Yeah, that was good. You guys had a lot of good questions. I appreciate that. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I can't help stop watching. Keep, keep watching questions. Uh, Nikhil, we did mention, talk about renders earlier. Saying what's the best render is like saying what's the best food. Everybody's going to have a different answer. So it is, there's several, several topics going on the forum about rendering and what's the pluses and minus of, of each given one. So check that out there. Um, otherwise, we're going to call it for now. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I'm glad this, this was a good thing. We, we uh, I'll be honest, it was a very full week between everything we had going on. I had a, a webinar and then we had some podcast recording and I thought... Q&A is always a fun spot, fun way to reach out with you guys, good way to end the week, and I don't have to prepare any reference images or anything for it, so it's, it's awesome, and, and I'm glad. It seems like a lot of people got stuff out of it, so thank you. We will be back sometime in the future. I don't know exactly when, but check out the, the calendar on the forum, forums.sketchup.com. Go to Happenings, and there's a calendar thread pinned to the top, and you can see when we'll be doing the skin live. Um, but other than that, I think we're done. So, did I miss something? I feel like I should have said some more things there at the end. No, I feel like you said a bunch. I just feel like you said plenty. Okay. Uh, it is worth, I mean, you might be specific and say, we're not going to be here next Friday. That is true. Next week, there that's will not be asking, live stream. That's why you're being all vague. That's right. I was trying to duck out, but Jody called me out. <laughs> no, no live streams next Friday, guys. We are going to be doing a whole series of i think we're doing five podcast recordings next week so if you're looking for more sketchup and want to get in on it no four i'm sorry four of them next week uh those are on the calendar as well so you can actually follow the links to crowdcast and you can listen in hang out ask questions in the podcast recording uh but no live streams next week I, we just we filled it all up so um but the week after we're going to double up on live streams because tyson will be doing one and i'll be doing one so it's going to be it's just madness. It's so much stuff. So, all right. On that note, we'll call it. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, until we see you next, stay sane, stay safe, and uh, have a great one. See you guys next time.